Welcome back to annual economic conference of Latvia Banka. This year it is dedicated to uh, the subject of the sustainable economy. In the first panel discussion we uh, talked about the interaction between uh, monetary and fiscal policy. Now it's time to take a deeper look at the sustainability topics uh, with more focus to Latvia. The second panel discussion will be in Latvian. For simultaneous translation, please choose macroeconomics.lv, macroeconomics.lv. Un tātad konferences turpinājums ir latviešu valoda. The second part of the conference will be in Latvian. You will be able to listen into it on the channels that were mentioned before, macroeconomica, lv, letta, Facebook. You can also ask questions in Slido platform, hashtag LB conference. The second panel about moving towards sustainable development will be moderated by Mr. Kushners, the governor of the Bank of Latvia in charge of sustainability. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to introduce the participants of our panel discussion. We have Zana Petre, who is head of the European Commission representation office in Latvian. She could not be here in person. It's nothing to do with vaccinations. The other speakers are Kristine Czernaya Mezhmala, member of the Council of the Latvian Financial and Capital Market, Krista Baumane, member of the Latvian Parliament, in charge of the Environment Committee, because the head of the committee could not participate and Mr. Anders Wilks, member of the Council of Latvia's Banka. For those who did not participate in the first part, in the first discussion, I can remind why Bank of Latvia talks about sustainability. First of all, Bank of Latvia is a central bank considers it one of the directions of our basic activities. And here I would like to draw your attention to the monetary policy strategy, which is a European level document where many sustainable issues are mentioned, sustainable economy, climate changes, and this is one of the umbrella documents of monetary policy. Monetary policy now has a clear link with climate and sustainability issues. But there is also the financial sector supervision, where the so-called Green Guideline document was published. And here we have even more detailed enumeration of these issues, degradation, pollution, deforestation, adaptation risks, sea level rising, and what not. All of this means that economy has to be adjusted to the climate changes. This is a supranational level within which Bank of Latvia finds its place. Of course, Bank of Latvia has been following basic issues of national economy and its development, and this is a very serious challenge which will affect our lives, our reactions and our vision of economy. Thus, Bank of Latvia wants to participate in this very complicated process 
with its analytical capacity, like we have done in many other spheres. Since we are at the very beginning of this long road, this conference will be like the basement or foundation raising by creating an objective view of the situation. This is the first step, and maybe a large step, by opening these issues. This issue is going to stay here. We are going to work on this issue. There will be expert discussions. There will be studies and research, analytical materials published. Bank of Latvia has chosen to participate in this process and help the state. As I said, the panel discussion today is the first step so that we can link our minds in common thinking, so that we have a common understanding of these issues. I think we have heard much about these issues, but we are in a global boat. The European Union, too many states maybe, but it's a strong economic bloc. We have the Green Deal Many people are afraid of it. So let's start with uh, larger issues. So, Zame, can you explain what the uh, European Green Deal is about? Thank you. It's a pleasure to participate in this discussion from Brussels. This means that life has come back to the usual state. And I'm in Brussels now, which means that we can talk remotely. And thanks to the bank for addressing these issues. I would like to start by saying that the President of the Commission has called it the strategy of future development of Europe. The pandemic has aggravated the whole process, creating new working places in the green sector. Of course, there will be huge changes. Will these be easy? And painless know this will be a very complicated process, but it's doable by changing the policies, by thinking clearly, and we have to start it immediately. We have to think about the national economy, about our enterprises, about industries and various sectors. How can they be pushed in the sustainable direction, and this refers to all aspects of functioning of the economy and enterprises. Those who say that a sustainable economy cannot grow, I would like to say no. Since 1990, the emissions have declined by 20% in Europe, but the economy has grown 60%. And this means that cutting emissions does not interfere with growth. Where does it come from, this Green Deal? Despite the idea that this is a Commission's invention, it's wrong. It's an agreement between the 27 member states and the parliament. And this summer, 
the climate law of Europe took effect, where we have the aim by 2050 to reach climate neutrality. And all member states have agreed to this goal. And the Green Deal has become a law, European-wide law. It's going to give certain clarity to the enterprises and assist them in planning the transition to new economy. So this is going to affect all sectors of policies and industries. Also before, there was energy policy, common energy policy, climate policies, which wanted to, to reduce by 2020 emissions by 20%. And the good news is that this interim goal was reached. But that is not enough. We need extra measures. We have to go further. We also can reserve to the United Nations researchers panel who said recently that despite all the efforts, climate changes are increasing. And this is what we feel every day. This is what we can read. And we had this summer, this heat wave. We had floods in Germany and Belgium. We had fires, forest fires in the south. Researchers and scientists say that the risk of global warming is really serious and we have to act together. And this is why six years ago, when the Paris Agreement was reached about emission reductions, the Paris Treaty, and it involved all the countries in the world, and the developed countries decided to help the less developed countries in reaching these goals. So, 2030, the new aim, 55% reduction. This is very ambitious. This is more than the 40% that was thought about previously, but we see that the previous targets were not serious enough. There are many goals, many aims in various policies. And in July, the Commission came out with a package of various regulations of how to achieve these targets. Let's look at transport and mobility, which creates about one-third of European emissions and spends one-third of energy. If we want to achieve climate neutrality by 2050, these emissions will have to be cut by 90%. And this means passing over from diesel and petrol engines to electricity. And the European Commission in July offered these new targets. Thus, by 2030, emissions have to be cut by 55% and from buses by 50%. And buyer fuel share has to grow. The second example is forestry and agriculture. These sectors can attract lots of carbon. Emissions in Latvian agriculture, in comparison with 2018, have grown. They have not gone down. This is why the Commission has put forward new forest strategy, CAP ideas, biodiversity strategies, and within these strategies, there will be various undertakings to cut down the emissions. 
The Commission also offers various investment tools. The greening, here we talk about recovery fund, here we resilience fund, here we talk about social and climate fund. And this will all together provide the seed money for the transition. This might be about 30% of all the money. But we cannot stop at this. We have to attract local authorities and private investment. And as the Commission's president emphasized, we have to think about social goals because it has to be just and fair. That's why the social fund comes in here to assist whichever sector of economy we think about, there will be a roadmap for achieving the targets. Thus, a comprehensive approach is going to be practiced. So all of us will have to participate in this process. And a few words. What we can expect in Latvia? I think the Green Deal will change our everyday life. The enterprises will have to change their activities and business plans We'll have to change our habits, how we travel, how we heat our houses, how we deal with our garbage and rubbish. This will be a big change and our life is going to change rather radically. The younger people are well aware of the problems and actually demand these changes. I think the process is gathering pace and we have to make use of these opportunities to move forward. Thank you. I hope we'll have an interesting conversation. Thank you, Zane. I think what we can gather from your talk is that we are talking about a joint process where many countries have taken a decision. This is a very broad process and the states have found joint solutions. It would be just obligations, but there will be also cooperation to have a more lively conversation. In Slido, you can vote on issues about what feelings do you have hearing the word sustainability. What are the ideas that occur to you? And you can ask questions. We'll try to include it in our discussion. As Zana is going to leave us soon, I will ask her an extra question. You mentioned taxonomy. Taxonomy is a process or a classification especially for, for the financial sector, which activities are considered to be green and sustainable. And the process has taken quite a long time. Taxonomy is being created, but there's a lot of discussion or contradiction about it. For example, use of gas, natural gas is considered scientifically as a fossil fuel, 
but in the Green Deal it's considered to be a good thing. And many NGOs actually stepped out of the discussions with the European Union, the Commission, because they had a different opinion on this. How do you evaluate this process? Can you say that taxonomy is a good compromise or is it a sign that this is taxonomy number one and then we will have taxonomy number two, maybe, and new laws? Yeah, no, no, like, uh, yes, uh, for sure, the taxonomy in the European Union, uh, this is scientifically uh, grounded tool, and this is really a tool for investors uh, and uh, businesses to understand the situation. And this, for sure, is not uh, just one document. Uh, it will be developed uh, when technology is developed and when scientific uh, evaluation will continue regarding uh, influence of different sectors on the cl climate. Taxonomy can be changed and it will for sure change and the philosophy behind that is uh, uh, analytical examples uh, how these different sectors influence emissions. Not uh, uh, how easy or uh, hard it is greening by these sectors. So this means that, uh, yes, this is a scientifically uh, based uh, approach, but it should be uh, acceptable for member states. And here we have different views and different opinions. And for uh, European Union to have the sustainably, sustainability targets and to have consensus regarding implementation and reaching these goals, we need discussions. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask Krista to tell about current situation, about the feeling when working in the parliament for some time and knowing different issues on agenda, all this picture which we see, but this, what is the feeling? What do we do? What do we see in Latvia? In what situation we are? So what is your point of view, how we face this, this transition? Hello. So in Latvia, we have had green ministers, green presidents. Uh, we have even had a green prime minister, uh, which uh, lost uh, a bag with green uh, dollars uh, in the office. Uh, but uh, we are not the uh, greenest country in the world. This is a myth. And uh, somebody has to say it aloud. Uh, so this is uh, repeated uh, for several times, but uh, environmental specialists try to tell that it is not true. And this is also revealed in uh, the data of international research. Uh, for, for instance, the uh, Environmental Performance Index shows uh, that uh, Latvia is on the 36th place, uh, not on the first, as we are used to think. Also, the latest uh, report from Latvia to European Commission uh, shows the same. And these data, which are uh, based on the uh, counting, and actually the situation is bad, and it becomes uh, worse. Uh, so uh, in old Europe, we hear problems uh, about bees, about different uh, species of birds reducing. So these are the, the headlines of the uh, so of these days. So we could think about, is it a pity that uh, some animals are disappearing or uh, what's going on? So all this uh, actually tells about the situation of e ecosystem and that it is like uh, as if we were sitting in an airplane uh, where uh, just the uh, screws are uh, uh, leaving the plane and we do not know at which moment it will be the last one and then the airplane uh, crashes. Uh, so, or uh, this emergency uh, landing, will it be possible at all? Uh, I joined uh, poli politics uh, one year ago from uh, directly from the meadow. I was uh, working in a Latvian Nature Foundation, uh, which actually uh, is active in uh, 
issues and renewal of natural landscapes and meadows in Latvia. So this is a disappearing resource, and so we need special species of cows which are uh, eating this grass, and it is the ecosystem services by these cows. And I am mentioning this just to, to emphasize that this is a quite uh, modern way how to take care about uh, uh, landscapes, uh, how to take care about landscapes, and also to be economically feasible regarding resources which we have. So all this also is also part of uh, sustainable uh, agriculture, sustainable uh, uh, economy as such, and uh, I'm really happy that all these issues are incorporated uh, uh, in the policy documents, and also Latvian Bank pays attention to these issues. And we are speaking about this among people uh, who uh, daily do not speak about uh, nature in their daily activities. I would like to mention some issues regarding this issue, which are really important for this. So uh, climate crisis, or cl uh, this is really a challenge which had to be faced yesterday. The next uh, data is today. And for me, actually, this is quite uh, strange to repeat and repeat, because it's not obvious for everybody here in Latvia, where more than half people do not think that uh, climate changes are really uh, a threat. Uh, nature protection and uh, c reducing climate uh, consequences, that is uh, not a niche uh, pro product or uh, or program, this should be addressed in all sectors, starting from agriculture until the transport and energy sector on all levels, on governmental level, local government level, school level, and also among finances and businesses. And also the, the most specific map uh, is the Green Deal. Uh, which Zane mentioned in her speech. I will not uh, say anything about it, just uh, that uh, I'm actually uh, tired of hearing in the meetings uh, the attitude of politicians saying so uh, precautious uh, or cautious, so as if we had to be uh, afraid of not the, uh, the climate uh, changes, but of this Green Deal. I'm of opinion that we have to be smart uh, with a view into future, and we have to use this Green Deal and use these opportunities provided by this new policy. And we, being a uh, rather small country, we have actually benefits and uh, advantages. And one of the examples which I could mention here is that the Green Deal is also a possibility to attract additional money. For instance, in Riga, we will have uh, mobility points uh, which will which will uh, combine uh, sustainable transport no uh, as the nodes of, uh, of sustainable transport modes. These solutions are available for all society, not only for that part which can afford electro electric uh, car right now. So this should uh, be as a connecting point for our society. So we have to plan this on all levels of our lives. Uh, and I also would like to mention that uh, despite of all uh, green politicians uh, so far, uh, we have had no political will to speak uh, green or even to act green. So in our environmental uh, ministry, uh, normally is fighting with uh, agriculture, with uh, farmers, uh, with uh, minist other ministries, and uh, is losing that fight. And I would think that this government uh, does uh, everything better, and the new climate law, which uh, will be. Uh, uh, submitted to the parliament. Uh, this really stipulates uh, cooperation and it is its uh, goals. And I do hope that ministries will start cooperation instead of fighting. And some uh, sectors which I would like to mention, I will not expand on this, but just to mention so one which is very close to me for many uh, years, that is food where we will have to change, where we will have to adopt uh, important decisions. This is how we grow, how we sell, how we pack, and how we spend and consume food. 
And here we will have to speak about sustainable uh, farming and about uh, subsidies to agriculture, and they should be directed towards uh, bio uh, agriculture where we really have uh, good, uh, good results. And I also would like to mention that we have to take care of our forests. So biotopes, uh, so actually the situation in forests is quite poor. Uh, we have to perceive forests as the raw material. We have to take care of them in a more sustainable way. Uh, we have to renew the balance between uh, forest as a raw material, as a nature resource. And we also have to think about our future energy source. So the uh, poor uh, exper experience with the mandatory purchase component for electricity, actually, so uh, we see this is really poor experience, and we have to uh, learn from this experience. We have to get rid of this, and we have to take a lesson from uh, the experience, good experience and good example from Lithuania and Estonia. And uh, also would like to say that in this process with, uh, with renewable energy resources, we have to think how not uh, to have a new mandatory component, but how to, uh, how to have the uh, support for those social groups which will not be, which will not be able to afford these uh, more expensive solutions. And uh, concluding regarding CO2 emissions, I would like to mention only one thing. And uh, in other countries, uh, CO2 uh, emissions are reducing. In Latvia, uh, they are increasing. And uh, what are we waiting for? So uh, Greta Thunberg uh, and us, this generation uh, will uh, not be happy with this. They will be uh, more clever than we are, and they will be uh, more green thinking. But we don't have time for them to grow up, actually. We have to act today. Climate changes cost money. And uh, the sooner we invest and adapt to these changes, the lower will be our costs in future, not only regarding money. And uh, I invite you all, uh, listeners, those who are managing big financial resources, to take this into account. Uh, so, so we all here in Latvia could uh, uh, live green also to the tomorrow and day after to the tomorrow. So thank you, Krista, very much. That, uh, that was uh, very uh, impressive, actually. Just one question about this uh, Latvian greening and green uh, Latvia. If we uh, travel along, so there so uh, around the Latvia, there are so very many meadows covered by bushes. Uh, so uh, cutting sites which are not uh, reforested, uh, which uh, also other plots of land. So nature takes over. This is green. So why, why we do not feel uh, green when we look uh, uh, at uh, scientists, at uh, their uh, ratings? Uh, don't they see something, or do they see something differently, or, uh, or what? This is because uh, people take much more than nature can replenish and uh, put back. And when we see uh, forests, uh, uh, forests uh, or meadows covered by forests uh, or uh, just uh, abandoned houses, uh, uh, we actually see that uh, more and more uh, areas are made into rapeseed fields, uh, wheat fields. And uh, yes, it is a big profit, sir, but at the same time, the land resource is made weaker, so they use pesticides and uh, mineral fertilizers. This uh, goes into the nature, and this balance is uh, disappearing. And this should be renewed, and, uh, and this can be done by cattle, by other way of farming, and this is... Uh, better than to replenish everything, to to cut all big trees, and so on and so far. 
Uh, so yes, we have to think in different way actually. So and let us uh, look at the result of our Slido. Uh, and uh, what do you think or what feelings do you have when you hear the word uh, sustainability? Expensive, future, equilibrium, balanced, uh, demagogy, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, this is actually an introduction uh, to uh, Andres' speech. Yes, very often we hear that it is expensive, it is threatening, we have to change our uh, uh, habits, but don't we see possibilities as well here? Is it really that huge invoice which we receive, or, or maybe we see also some positive uh, sides? Uh, so where is that hope from the point of view of an economist? But, uh, well, it is a complicated issue. We still live in a time of change, and these changes are coming one after another. There's COVID. Then there was the idea that uh, economy will break down, and then there is another wave, and again we think of it, and then the climate change wave, which might affect everything. So this is going to be a roller coaster, really. And I don't think there has been anything similar. We had the First World War, Second World War, and we had the Iron Curtain, we had various blocks. But now all countries are involved, all continents are involved. So it's a global process and we'll have to adapt. It's also a long-term business that will have to adapt. Those regions that will not be good at adapting will be the losers. And we cannot drag it out. We have to understand it fast and we have to adapt as fast as possible. There'll be the good stories, the success stories, and there'll be the failures. As regards Latvia, we have to act fast. We have to go to the circular economy making use of the existing resources, avoid waste. Thus, our life standard should grow on falling resources. At present, Latvia is growing. There's a good growth, but there is also the resource growth. But the general tendency in Europe is that the economy grows, but consumption of resources falls. Which means we haven't adapted structurally yet. Also in our minds. As regards our economy, it also produces quite a lot of emissions and we have to change it. This ch tendency is not positive with us. When we think about our forests, we are above the average one. The only one where we are below is that the number of people involved in economy is smaller. And that's quite interesting. The economy grows but the employment falls and that's actually good and that's also bad so as i said we have to change our frame of thinking and if some element does not work well it will be difficult to achieve the results the european union was the first united states and china are also competing, they are also gathering their force. And all of this is calculated in monetary terms. There will be the carrot and the whip. And we have to take cognizance of this. So how can we pass to circular economy very fast? We have to focus on it on the state level. 
like when we wanted to join the European Union or introduce Euro, everybody has to participate in it. Our actions and policies have to be based on quality data. I know that there are objections among the banks. What are the green investment points? Everybody wants, wants to add the label green, but uh, there is a huge difference between what is called green and can we really compare these data and can we trust the data. The emissions will be calculated, they will be traded, there will be quotas and there will be accumulation or storage. Again, we have to get prepared for that. People have to understand that today, especially the business people, have to think about it. Do we store? Do we emit? Maybe we could, uh, maybe we could earn a lot of money by being fast and early. And this is also a good stimulus for research and development. There will be new designs, new materials. This cannot be done without good cooperation between science and business. We have good resources, we have a good foundation, but we are not very effective. We have lots of water, we have lots of wind, we have forests. Also, sorting of waste is difficult. It doesn't succeed yet. And maybe we could avoid the whole cycle. We have to participate in policy workout also in the European Union. There might be interests of the small states, there might be interests of the Nordic countries. There will be various groups with various interests. Also, if we are talking about durable goods, there were many imported sort of single-use goods which we have to throw out after using them for a very short time. This is a serious issue. And the new business niches will appear. We have to think about all of it. About forests, for example, the forestry provides 5.3% of our economy, 20% of our exports. But how do we use these resources? Well, just mechanical processing of wood, which is cheap and massive. And we are lagging behind in comparison with other countries. Three to five to ten times in comparison with Western Europe and Nordic countries. We have to think a lot about added value. Maybe some chemical processing of timber. The Netherlands has 10% of the cheap processing and 90% of the expensive one. This refers also to employ, employment. Then the salaries are of course lower there if there is little processing of timber. But we could gain much more from forestry. As regards land, we have bigger land resources much of land is uncalculated. In some regions it's intensively used. Chemical usage is growing. Pesticides and artificial fertilizers. But we have also lots of wetlands. 
as regards energy. We have kind of movement against the modern resources. We are still sitting, if one could say so, on the old hydroelectric power station resources. Much to be done there. And, of course, processing of waste, collection of waste. If we could collect everything on a European level or scale, we would have 8% GDP out of it. And we haven't learned it. And that would be also 50,000 new working places. And our big plus is that we have a lot of land and we have a relatively small economy, which means that in the future we could accumulate emissions of other countries. For example, one euro for economy, we need only half a hectare. In Germany, it's nine hectares, and Luxembourg, 24 euros. But that means that this money is going to flow to other places. For example, CO2 in Iceland is being stored. So this is a new wise or smart economy which will raise our living standards and we have to approach it like that we will not be able to avoid it if we are not in time we will be lagging behind but this could be Nokia of Latvia thank you I'm listening to this and we are talking about the idea that there will be new entrepreneurial activities, business models. A question from Slido about the commentary, ambiguous commentary, that the fall in population might be sustainable. No, it is not like that. Latvia and Lithuania are the two states where there is a very huge drop in population. But this is something not to be proud of. But this means that our existing resources can create quite a lot of economy. But we should look at other resources and we should think about migration, positive migration, so that our capacity grows very fast. Those people who live in other countries might be very good if they came back to Latvia. There are lots of educated, business-minded people. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, the word resources was mentioned. Financial resources. From the point of view of monitor or financial system, what is the role of financial sector? Thank you very much for your invitation to participate in this discussion. And what I would like to start with is that these climate changes is something new, something unknown. We are not used to thinking about it uh, in our daily lives. It will require change of our habits, daily habits, uh, also the ways how we make our business, how we receive uh, our financial resources and finances uh, system. But this is not the only way how to cope with all this uh, transformation. It is essential to look at this from the point of view of risk uh, management, and uh, I would like to divide this in three parts. The first is about uh, each of us as personality, as a household, about company, financial uh, institution, and uh, uh, governmental sectors. 
and also to evaluate how we influence environment and which are the risks. So we will have to change our uh, daily habits uh, after this uh, transition. We have look at we can look at our business trips, at our uh, waste sorting, which was already mentioned, and. Uh, with a view uh, to this, uh, we have to think how I, my company, my, my institution can change this uh, carbon footprint and to change this approach. Another is, uh, is clients uh, and our cooperation partners and to evaluate the influence to my business uh, and to cooperation as such. And here we have a nice uh, example, it is financial sector, uh, credit portfolios, and here we have this significant role to assess uh, what importance uh, is of these assets in my balance sheet, will it be sustainable and reaching those goals, and uh, to make for companies and the government and the country strategies that are directed towards sustainability and economy and to reduce this uh, negative impact uh, our historic approach. Uh, and the third part, which is very essential, which we have to speak about, this is innovations and invest investments. So investment in green transformation uh, will be needed. We, we will not proceed without this. We have to transform economy and we have huge resources available. Uh, and so we have to use these. And here I would like to emphasize uh, um, just one small doubt uh, that we have to pay attention uh, to green washing. And here uh, we cannot put under the green flag anything, so we will pay attention to this and we will, uh, as we, uh, this uh, AML risk, uh, and uh, now we are really uh, investigating and uh, watching what is our green approach and so the taxonomy which was already mentioned and we will supervise uh, that the greening is not used maliciously and so green investments uh, are very, becoming very popular demand uh, actually is larger than the supply and especially it was during the pandemic crisis when green uh, the, requ the request or demand for these green instruments is more than 100 percent more than it used to be before. And so it means that we are, the public uh, is changing its approach, its understanding. And when I speak about sustainability, I always speak about things that I have two uh, kids at home. And uh, this reminds me how I purchase things, how I shop how I sort uh, waste and uh, children really make me think about uh, our future. Coming back to finances sector, of course, uh, finances sector show, uh, sees two types of risks. So these are physical risks and transition risks. So physical, as this is climate changes, floods, uh, storms, rem just remember uh, heat of the past summer when it was uh, nice to have a Spanish summer, but uh, it uh, takes uh, with it uh, also fire, forest fire and additional risks uh, which are uh, transformed into uh, insurance case or credit risks. Uh, also changes to uh, uh, legislation and here uh, these are transition risks. We have to adapt our uh, processes to be to manage with, uh, with these changes. Also, changes of consumer habits, uh, our customers require our changes, and our investors uh, want to understand where the money is invested and whether it will be for in the good for uh, sustainable economy. So we can include these risks in the uh, framework, uh, existing framework, and this is uh, what we in the financial sector know very well. So these are liquidity risks and credit risk and market risk, all the same risks which are uh, already managing uh, today. But uh, uh, we have a, a, a question how to do this uh, practically and how this influence our daily life. Here we have to improve availability of these tools which we have already. We need data to measure these 
And uh, here, I think that uh, the most important thing is cooperation exchange and also exchange of information. And then the uh, society will uh, trust uh, and adopt this uh, green transformation. And so we need to measure this influence somehow. Uh, what is, uh, as a concluding remark, which I what I would like to emphasize, yes, we have the European Green Deal. It is important. And uh, we should have a situation uh, when a company w or financial institutions working in uh, Europe, when they understand that it is uh, too difficult, uh, this uh, burden is too large, and this should be put on regions which are not so sustainably well thinking. So here we should uh, uh, create this awareness uh, for, uh, for today, for future, and for the planet. And I also see on Slido those uh, words that this is just demagogy and that this is uh, just uh, empty words. But no, I agree, this is our future. Thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Zane, who will leave us uh, and continue her work in Brussels. But uh, coming back to our topic, I would like to say that one dimension uh, which we uh, have to mention in our discussion is so we is time time we we so uh, twenty thirty twenty fifty so uh, this is we have to survive until then but. Uh, how do we see, uh, so we speak about this big scale of the process, but how should we perceive time in this case? If all will be doing this, then maybe we just sit down, so the way will bring us to that sustainability. Maybe we can uh, uh, just uh, live as we lived before. And it seems that this will be very expensive, what it is planned, and also not uh, uh, comfortable for some. So what is your feeling? So how should we approach this, or how sh what risks should we take into account? Or, uh, or maybe when we are in a hurry, then we just uh, make it uh, worse for us. Uh, I could start uh, answering this. This is very serious, uh, so we shouldn't sit down. Latvia should uh, continue with, so actually, uh, Latvia is already lagging behind regarding SEG, so, so it is, uh, uh, we have to uh, be dynamic, we should uh, proceed. Uh, and we have to have a model of economics that is, if, if governments will not uh, uh, direct this, then business will do this. So uh, figures, which we see in the figures, so huge money is uh, invested in Europe, in the USA, thinking about future models, uh, about uh, new sectors, about absorbing uh, uh, carbon, uh, how much it will cost, uh, where it will be directed, and what would be the price of carbon emissions, and how, the, how much the mo uh, this model will cost. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, uh, it was startups, uh, and it was uh, without any uh, future, uh, without success. But right now, uh, these uh, businesses are really successful, and we have to do this. In Latvia, this background, so uh, we are a green country, and we have to add uh, this sustainability, sustainability, circularity, and then we have to act fast. Uh, we shouldn't uh, wait, uh, because um, then we can uh, lag behind. This is like Olympics uh, or championship, whatever we name this. Uh, we have to have ideas, we have to structure this, and we have to implement this. We need a good dialogue, and we, have, we need uh, valuable data. If we speak about Olympics, uh, so there is actually this approach, uh, it is the main thing is to participate. We could participate just as a tick, um, you know, but uh, we should strive for balanced uh, way of living, and uh, we need structural changes in this country. So uh, uh, one additional shock uh, 
uh, if something is so it is good that we have this competition in on the Baltic scale so we see the Baltic uh, Tallinn will be the green city uh, yeah, it will achieve this status in Lithuania they uh, do a lot and they are we are already lagging behind and uh, right now we have to understand that this is business model this is the issue of money so it's not only the way of thinking this is possibility uh, to be on another level on higher level and we have to have this discussion that uh, discussion that uh, and understand that uh, so that uh, only uh, one sector should do this. Sustainability will not work if it's only one sector. We have to have a future approach to all this, and we all have to be joined in this. So each separately and uh, all sectors separately and together with uh, other sectors. And these changes will be different, and this crisis will differ from what we are used to, because this will not be driving by, by uh, financial sector, but by the change of attitude of or behavior of uh, consumers and this is important for by uh, important for uh, inhabitants for population and we need uh, respect to national policy uh, i think that we have good examples uh, uh, system of deposits uh, which actually was uh, delayed by 20 years now finally we will have it and uh, coming back to to human beings and humanity, I understand that the people are afraid of changes. Uh, so we are afraid of costs, uh, and uh, to some extent, uh, it is easier not to do something instead of doing. But uh, I agree to all speakers, uh, previous speakers, that we cannot continue like that. That uh, I am happy that we all understand this. Our Children understand this. Sometimes they even uh, understand it better than we do. There are many, pol many pol politicians that understand this. And uh, uh, I think that gradually this uh, understanding will be in all levels of our life. Uh, and uh, we will understand that it's, uh, we had to do it yesterday, and we have to do it today, and we have to change. And so we have these possibilities. Uh, uh, it, uh, we can learn from others, from our neighbors, uh, and this is really positive way. Uh, one uh, question uh, uh, which has been uh, asked by the audience is uh, about these goals, about uh, how realistic are these goals. In reality, can Latvia actually implement all this? Uh, what they so green deal uh, and obligations uh, or uh, 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 sustainable sustainable development is it possible is it possible to achieve take into account uh, what we heard from krista and other comments uh, uh, that we do not have the best starting point uh, uh, if you are awake and all others are already halfway uh, in the distance, so is it worth doing? Is it possible? And uh, and if not, then what is the alternative here? I would like to ask another question: uh, whether it's possible. Now the question is: Do we wish this? What do we really wish? Do we really want to continue as we uh, do it right now? Is it uh, really okay? Or if we wish to live green and differently and to implement this green deal, because I do want to emphasize this, this is not because that somebody pushes this, that somebody wants this, but just we together want this, and uh, that we live together at here, today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow. So we have to find ways how to do this. and. Uh, there are quite many uh, experts or advisors around, and the politicians can uh, uh, take right decisions. Uh, so we have to take into account uh, the science, uh, and those uh, decisions should be sustainable and realistic. And uh, I would not ask uh, whether it is possible. I would like to ask how will we implement this. So, so everything is nice uh, on the uh, level of idea, but if you are small and lazy, and so, uh, 
And uh, uh, yeah, I could say that, yeah, well, 20 meters, I would like to jump, but I cannot. So what to do now? What is our prospect? So if I say no, it's impossible or uh, so what to do if that goal is so far, so uh, high or it's demo actually not uh, motivating. So I think that the, uh, it's about the time schedule, how much resources and time we will need. And so it will have two, uh, two problems, time. Ambitions are quite uh, nice, but it will take uh, maybe more time. Uh, so it is uh, the way of thinking which we have to change, uh, not only on the level of uh, one person, but of the, on the uh, national level, and also resources. Uh, this uh, another question will be resources. So this is my my idea. I can't explain how it will be uh, implemented, but these ambitions uh, could take, and it will be more expensive than we are calculating. But we have to mobilize, and these stories about climate changes and about migration uh, caused by climate changes, these are uh, more and more... Uh, uh, and this actually, there are re regions uh, which uh, will suffer from this. Uh, the question is how fast we will be able to mobilize uh, and also technologies, how these will develop uh, so because we can uh, mobilize. So we see how, uh, uh, what is the number of flights uh, in space and uh, so they are also polluting actually. So this is uh, the question about the transition periods, about time schedule. And in case of Latvia, we shouldn't worry, actually, because uh, countries and regions with more complicated situation, with, which uh, have too heavy industrialization or too heavy pollution by agriculture, or so actually our starting point is better, uh, and uh, we 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 are actually in better situation in better situation, and this is the issue. What is your uh, living standard, uh, so how do we perceive this, and what is the, qu uh, so maybe we will uh, have uh, revised these targets or these goals for for some time and, and, and we ca uh, accomplish them a little bit later. Yeah, we'll have to part with egoism and about thinking about our potential profits and think about ethical choices of the future and this is a transformation of thinking it is difficult to learn it it's also the issues of good governance and social equality and inclusion we can't forget about these so egoism will have to be put aside now some people say that laziness actually moves us forward we want others, we want things to work for us. Krista mentioned an interesting phrase. Do you want it like it is today? Many people will say yes, we want it to be like it is today. Do we have a choice that in some sectors in Latvia, or maybe all Latvia, goes on as it is? but the rest of the world goes somewhere else. Is this possible? No. It's an issue of money. There will be money fines. Everything will be measured. Everything will be calculated. And it's an issue of balance. We have to be the earners from this process, not the losers. Well, we are calculating things even today. But it will be even more visible. We have to understand, we have our common care of an important thing. It's going to touch various fields and all countries do we want to enjoy the fruit of globalization and trade or do we close down we produce our own things we close against the rest of the world we sustain our life level 
life standard and produce everything ourselves. Can we imagine it? That would be an alternative, that we live in an autarky, in a way. States which have such models are normally dictatorial countries. They are the ones who do not drive with the cars produced in these countries. They normally use the cars produced in some other countries and they wear the clothes produced in other countries. So can we talk about it realistically? No, it's hypocrisy. There are some countries where they have never heard about the industrial revolutions. That's also a chain, a choice. But being in the club, in the one force of the rich countries, we are used to live quite well and we can fall from standards. Well, we are not the poorest country in the European Union, so we cannot fall further. I think we can fall very far. Three quarters of countries are below us. If we are talking about something new, about the scale, what about innovations? And there are some skeptical comments. Well, what about investment in research and science and brain train? Low investment in research and development. So what, what, what's our future? Anders said, well, we have to put the money in there. Maybe this is the last chance when we can do it and hope that there's a good return. Perhaps we have to change our thinking that it's good that... What do you feel about it? Is research and development worth investing? And can we have a breakthrough? Or is it too late? Is it too late? No. No, we have to focus on the targets. There are some spheres where we have resources, for example, forestry, agriculture, land, material sciences, mathematics, theology, physics. It will demand quite a lot of money, but also a change of approach because these spheres are very depleted. I think we need a different approach so that we have a result. It has to be a palpable result. New materials, less production, reprocessing, this is all very important. But this is where we need a dialogue and political will. But there are different funds that come from recovery and resilience facility. It's not so much about the resources, it's whether we have the capacity to do it. It has to be very pragmatic. We, we need palpable, tangible result. This is a complicated issue because we had a very low support for science and research and innovations as well. So the good news is whatever the past, we at last know what we want from our scientists. Because we know what we need in economy. Another question about an unpleasant process. These big changes will mean chances, opportunities, new niches,
but some people will miss these opportunities or they will not understand what to do. And some businesses will not correspond to these principles. We hear a lot about it in financial institutions that something will have to go. There will be bankruptcies of enterprises that cannot survive. And I remember a phrase, I was struck by it. Somebody from a German bank said, what to do about the losses, about assets, for example, oil assets, oil deposits. The banks have lended money to them, to these companies. So how do we take this process? And they said, we have to choose a way how we die. But there will be some kind of deaths in some sectors. The assets will be moved. What does it look like from the surveillance institutions? these losses, these write-offs. Does it create a stress? We don't know. Well, we don't know much about it. And in order to fight it, we will have to think about it and plan it. We, together with the banks, are in a very intensive dialogue. We start with the strategies and then we go to the risk analysis to establish the level of risk and what can be done about it. Well, oil industry, petroleum industry, well, the impact can be reduced. I suppose it will be a very complex solution. Thus we recognize that this is a process which can be guided and the businessmen who are in this sector will have to be rather careful because these are branches which will be transformed. I think this is important message to business people that financial sector is already evaluating it. And the business people will feel the change. The bank has demanded the sustainable information about what's the enterprise is going to do and the businessman was complaining but this is what's going to happen the banks in order to provide loans will be evaluating the sustainability princes principles thus what we talk about everybody will have to talk what can be done differently how do we reduce the negative impact? It's never too late to do it. If after today you have some ideas that something can be changed in your activities, it will never be too late. Excellent. We are approaching the end. One question. There are questions. Is Europe not going to put the burden on us by depositing and storing waste or CO2 storage 
Maybe somebody could talk about this possibilities that we are used, malused. No. States are involved. It, there will be no movement of waste because that does not change the problem. We have to reduce waste, not move it out. It's an issue of cooperation. What Europe is doing is there's a fair adjustment fund. There will be countries that will need extra support, financial support, difficult to transform. We are not talking about Latvia. We are talking about some regions in Eastern Europe where there is heavy industry and mining still. But it cannot be done like in the colonial power when the Western powers just exploited other regions and solved their own problems. It will not be like this. There will be discussions about this. This has to be approached by advising those who will have to transform. We are not in the worst position. But there will always be discussions about numbers and calculations. Financial sector is very important. Central bank will be involved. The issue of credibility of data is very important. I expect the Commission will have problems explaining it to other regions and what kind of movements will be adopted. It will take some time, but it's not simple. These are huge amounts of money. We don't see the money in 10 years, we'll see it. That now. I just want to mention that uh, climate neutrality is uh, not uh, uncommon in the European Union, but it is for each separate country. So nobody will take from uh, the other, or it is just just uh, buying this uh, c uh, carbon uh, quota for. Uh, if it will be available and it will be huge money, as it is uh, shown by the projections of the central banks that is uh, uh, ten times more than the current price. It is actually a risk uh, regarding uh, for different businesses right now. So we have approached the end of our conversation. And anything? Yes. I just uh, wanted to answer the question which was asked, uh, um, what is sustainability for me? Uh, for me, sustainability means not only that today I have food and shelter, but uh, uh, I, it also uh, it is food and shelter for next generations. And this is really how I feel, how I think, and uh, uh, just not to be in good position today, but also for a future. And uh, I do hope that with such positive and different uh, way of thinking, we can just uh, agree uh, that we continue our work also in future. So any other final so uh, remarks? So it is cooperation and awareness, that means, and that is sustainability for me, that we have to incorporate in every our activity, and then we will be able to reach these goals. Actually, you concluded uh, and summarized instead of me. And I think that what we heard today is that this is the uh, scale of the process, the depth of this process, and uh, the, the scale of the uh, differences, the, uh, the how different it is from uh, our today's daily habits. So it doesn't uh, refer on to some, only to some sectors. This is regarding uh, regarding all economy, and we see that this is really impressive 
uh, international framework, and this uh, really uh, refers to Latvia. So we are rather far from the goals to be achieved, and so actually in some cases we are uh, moving in opposite direction right now. And so we have to switch this to change this, and we see also the this how multiple uh, this uh, process is regarding different influences. We have this international framework, we have the wish to sell and um, buy, also a financial sector, uh, which has uh, joined this process uh, as one filter, if we could say so, which will uh, follow these uh, movements and these measures, and uh, they also have uh, different uh, responsibilities regarding taxonomy, and we can end uh, with the feeling today that this big ship, uh, this uh, big ship has started to sail, and although some wants to say that they feel better in that small boat, but the society, the uh, country, the world has started movement, and we have possibilities, uh, and we can use this movement to be in avant-garde, uh, and, uh, and uh, so uh, we will uh, move forward, and uh, we will be in, uh, as pioneers. Uh, so I think that uh, as this is one very interesting, exciting, also scaring, uh, process, the beginning of such process, and it depends only on us, on our ability to organize processes. We didn't speak about this today, but we will uh, speak it uh, uh, in other conferences. So we will have to change our attitudes, we have to participate, and we will succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a nice trip, uh, which our country has started. And the cooperation uh, in this uh, aspect should be in the whole Latvia. Thank you very much. Thanks to participants of the second panel discussion, also to all participants which were asking uh, uh, questions in Slido and the all audience, and also to those who involved in uh, different, uh, for instance, on Twitter, on different discussions. So topics are very interesting, uh, very deep, and uh, we will continue. Today you heard different well, uh, opinions from uh, high-level uh, experts uh, from uh, Latvian experts, and the panel discussions were uh, regarding sustainability, sustainable way of thinking, climate changes, uh, which will be guiding processes in the country in the nearest uh, future. So we will see who will be champions and who will be lagging behind. Uh, so the changes are quite uh, uh, serious, and we hear about these changes uh, for many tens of years, but uh, these changes are now very, very serious, and they will be faster and faster. The topics uh, were uh, important. They are uh, the pa part of, uh, of processes initiated by the ACB, and also uh, in the Latvian Bank, uh, Bank of Latvia, uh, regarding sustainability goals uh, and active work, also improving analytical uh, competencies and uh, data revision competencies, those who are advising, those who see the overall picture, who can be partners in achieving those goals. Uh, so uh, nothing ends today. We will continue uh, with this work on the uh, site macroeconomics.lv, and uh, there you can read uh, different articles daily and uh, also in different media channels and conferences and other formats. Uh, sustainability issue will um, be more and more topical in uh, different strategies, inviting you to think how we can uh, be sustainable um, in long term. And the task of uh, central banks is to ensure price stability, stability of financial sector, 
But stability, it is not stagnation. Stability, that is uh, like when you drive a bicycle, so you need, need a balance and also movement forward. And when we move forward, uh, when central banks move forward, they see, have to see the issues and the measures uh, sustainable in a sustainable way. They should be independent in decision making and uh, telling their opinion. So very much of uh, very serious work. Everything what we discussed today, it will be uh, discussed to do tomorrow, and so we will continue this work until we reach the goals which we have put uh, for us. So thank you for joining uh, today in uh, the annual conference of Latvian, uh, Latvia's Bank. The next year, 2022, is significant for the um, Latvia's Bank. It will be 100th anniversary uh, of the bank, and we will have different activities. Uh, uh, we will look back into the history, and uh, we will also look forward. And uh, together with other partners and colleagues, uh, we will make the public good uh, with the view of sustainability in future. Thank you very much for being with us today here in this conference. Now, different materials will be uh, published on macroeconomics.lv and other channels. And uh, thank you for listening, for participating, and uh, let us uh, meet uh, next year in our Jubilee Conference.